Welcome back, Internet, to another Reddit Stories. This one is Ask Reddit. Basically, people ask everyone else on Reddit a question, and they answer. So, let's get into it. So, the question in this video is, What's the scariest thing you've ever woken up to during the middle of the night? My boyfriend screaming for me to wake the F up. There was a car pretty much on fire right outside her bedroom window. How I managed to sleep through the exploding tire sound is beyond me. That sock was loud. I was 11, woke up to the sound of screaming and shouting. My cousin, who was living with us, was about 17 and in my room holding the door from being opened. On the other side of the door was my mother screaming to be let in. My sister was in the bunk under mine and she was crying. Suddenly my cousin comes to and opens the door. My mom rushes in and asks my cousin and us if we were okay. There was a commotion in the hallway and in the living room, but I couldn't tell what it was. When I peeked out the door, I saw my stepfather holding a small 22 caliber rifle and looking out the windows frantically. Suddenly, cops show up and start arresting my stepdad. My mom was yelling at the police and sitting there with my cousin and sister like, what the hell? We all noticed the broken sliding glass door and suddenly realized there were large bullet holes all over the house, through the entertainment center, and above the couch where my cousin was sleeping just minutes before. I guess what happened is someone was shooting at someone people walking by our apartment and the stray bullets just hit our place. My cousin woke up and immediately thought the people were inside shooting us, so he ran towards the kids' room and kept anyone from coming in like a badass. My mom woke up and immediately thought to check up on us, but she couldn't get into the room because of my cousin. My stepdad grabbed his gun out of instinct. The cops showed up and assumed my dad was the shooter and arrested him. All in all, a pretty fun night! Yeah, their 17-year-old cousin was a badass. Immediately heard gunfire, heard gunshots, saw gunshots just above his head while he's sleeping, and immediately went over to where his little cousin was. Yeah, that, that kid's a badass. I just moved into a new house, not really unpacked other than a mattress on the floor. I startle awake in the middle of the night. I'm wide awake and I don't know why. Then I hear this faint noise on the hardwood floor, followed by a small thunk. I wait. Some furtive noises, followed by another thunk. This sporadically goes on for a couple more minutes. Then I decide to investigate it. I go down the hall, fully expecting to find someone trying to stealthily rob us or something. Nope. One of the damn cats had taken a round makeup container out of one of my boxes and was batting around slowly on the empty hardwood floor. Damn cat. I was at uni. My bedroom was on the ground floor of the house. I was woken up at around 4am by scratching and heavy breathing at my window, which I tried to ignore for 20 minutes, hoping that whoever it was would just go the F off. It was a long 20 minutes of me trying not to crap myself. But off they done not F. So I decided to go out to the front door and kindly ask them to cease their scratching and heavy breathing. Turned out it was one of my housemates who was absolutely off his tits. Lost his keys, wallet, and phone on a night out. He thought scratching at my window would be better than knocking on the door or ringing the doorbell. A year and a half ago, I couldn't get very comfortable in bed, so I decided to try sleeping on the couch in the living room. It was at about 1 a.m. I'm in a restful state of not quite dozing off yet, but just about to, when I hear shuffling footsteps come down the hallway. I wait to see which kid it is, 5-year-old or 8-year-old, and if they actually need me or just going to get a drink or something. The footsteps shuffle past me and to the fireplace. It's pitch black, and I hear my 5-year-old now talking to the fireplace hushedly. I have no idea what she's saying or who she's saying it to. I let it go on for three or four sentences, with pauses in between before I say her name. She stops talking, shuffles to where I am on the couch, and full body plops down onto the cushion next to me. I gasp, squeaked, and waited a few minutes before getting up to cover her. She didn't remember doing it the next day. What in the actual F, children? So for the original poster of the story, I believe you are actually in a horror film. Right now you're witnessing the full, like, oh, the kid is talking to an imaginary friend, doesn't remember anything, and like a week later you're all going to be, like, in the basement tied up. So get out of the house. Although, I think this post was over a month ago. So, whoops. There was this one time. So I live in southwest Colorado, and during the summer months it gets pretty warm. One night, I was sleeping with my window open. Mind you, it's one of those upscale s-hole rental apartments where the windows don't even have screens. So there I am, dead ass asleep, when all of a sudden, I am jolted awake. By what? 
I had no idea. I lay there for a few seconds, trying to gain my bearings, when I feel this heavy thing step onto my chest and walk up towards my face. It was like having a huge cat on me. It was making this sound. That kind of sounds like a cute ex-girlfriend when she snores, but much faster. As I feel, well, I could only imagine where whiskers tickling my chin. I am screaming in my head, don't effing move. Stay still, you'll get your face ripped off. What the hell is happening? It's a chupacabra. Once the whiskers were satisfied that I didn't smell like food, it wandered towards the edge of my bed. I didn't waste any time. I threw the blankets off myself, forcing basically the whole mattress, all my bedding, and the chupa effing cabra onto the floor. I stand on the edge of my bed and do a catwalk from the bed to bedside table to computer desk until I can finally find the light switch. When I turned the switch, I wasn't prepared for what I saw on the floor. It was the biggest raccoon I've ever seen in my life, just staring back at me like, what the hell bro, that's bright. Getting him out of the house was a whole other story entirely. Okay, 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 I'll tell you the rest. So. As this monster raccoon and I are both looking at each other with these stupid looks on our faces, I have this thought of, how do you even deal with this? It wasn't like a fully formed plan came to mind, I just knew he had to get out. So I spider monkey open my door and jump into my living room and slam it shut. I'm looking around for what I had. Couch, footstool, blankets, TV stand. I grab the couch and start sliding across the floor to block access to the kitchen and start slamming doors to the other places in the house, like my bathroom, roommate's room, and opening the door that goes to the outside, which is on the other side of the living room. Once I have everything in place, I feel good and start corralling this guy out. At this point, I open my door and the little bastard is gone. I can't find him. So I step a little further into my room and I hear this <laughs> Sound coming from my closet. As I stick my head further into the room, I see the little effer tearing my towel with his teeth. At which point I start yelling at him, Hey, cut that ass out. That's the only one I have. He didn't listen, but my roommates did. So I grab my Louisville slugger and try to nudge this guy out of my closet. He wasn't at all concerned. It just kind of went with it. And I kind of push him towards the living room. So Rocco the raccoon and I are merging out of my room at his pace. And I make eye contact with my roommate. She was pissed. I've never seen her so mad in my life. However, once she sees the raccoon, her eyebrows goes up and she's just like, nopes, and right back into her room and slams the door. After that, I hear this muffled voice yelling, here's your new friend. What a dick. Anyway, over the course of about 15 minutes, Rocco finally gets the hint that he's not exactly welcome and wanders outside. I'm convinced it's because there was a couch between him and food, and I wouldn't let him climb it. But yeah, that's the story of Rocco the Raccoon and how I woke up with him. I always get a little jumpy for the first night I am alone when my spouse travels for work, which is pretty frequent. One night, I turned off the light and started falling asleep. About 10 minutes after I turned off the light, I thought I was still awake. I opened my eyes for some reason and saw a large shadow, human sized dart from the door of my room across to the window on the other side. I sat bolt upright and screamed out loud, turned on the light, and nothing was there. I did not think I was asleep, but it's possible. The orientation of windows would not have allowed for a shadow moving in that direction. No idea what happened. Could have been dreaming. Never happened again. So I have an ex-girlfriend that would tell me a story that um, she was lying in bed and woke up and saw kind of the exact same thing like a large black shadow out of the foot of her bed. She wasn't dreaming, she was awake, she saw it, and then pulled the covers right back over her head and was like, mm, for the rest of the night. So yeah, I don't know if I believe in ghosts or not, but I'm open to the idea, you know? I mean, there's a lot of things that we don't know about, so why can't that be a thing? So, thanks again for joining me on another Reddit story. So, this one was a little bit different than what I usually do. Um, I kind of like these, where it just asks the one question and then, you know, just tell story after story after story. So, I might be doing this one a little bit more in the future. I'm still going to keep on doing the, like, entitled parent and those kind of things, too. But this one was kind of fun to do. I really enjoyed it. So, if you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. So, until then, later, kids.